In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use the new overlapping bars feature in Power BI. We're going to look through how we can improve our original solution with the overlapping bars with this new feature, as well as some new improvements that you can think about implementing yourself, such as changing the label placements, uh, changing colors, as well as adding variance bars in your overlapping bar charts. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So a few months ago, I had a requirement where I needed to create an overlapping bar chart to show values uh, for a previous and the current value sales. And this is actually how that video looked like. And at that time, Power BI didn't have a native way of uh, doing this type of visual. So you would need to kind of have them side by side, but not overlapping like this. And while this feature or, or kind of this method worked at the time, we also needed to set up a lot of things to make sure that they are always aligned and that they are showing the correct values. So a few things to note in this solution is that the fact that actually there's two charts here hidden, they are just put on top of each other and then just kind of using measures and some visual tricks to make sure that they're always aligned and um, they always have the same heights so that when you're comparing between the two of them, that they are showing the correct values. Now, as of the February updates that was released this year, this whole solution is now deprecated with a much easier to implement native solution in Power BI Desktop. So today I'm going to show you how you can do that fairly easily. So this is a new template version of kind of of the same data sets that I want to use the, the overlaps with. So here we're showing the total sales for each of these different categories that we select. We already have a few things set up in our semantic model here. We have the sales, which is just basically what we're showing in the bar chart here. So we are showing the total sales for each of the months for a 1997 applied already applied a filter here just to keep the bars a little bit shorter. And then we also have a previous month sales measure here, which is essentially just calculating what is the sales for the previous month. And what I want to do, first of all, is to recreate the solution that we had from my previous video using this new native feature. So what we're going to do is first we're going to bring in the sales PM here. Now I'm going to just make sure that it is on the left hand side. Sales PM. Yeah. And then I'm just going to adjust a few things first of all. So we're, I'm just going to change the colors just to make it easy to know which one is which. So I'm going to make the previous month sales a lighter blue color so we can see exactly which month that is. Perfect. So from here to enable the overlap, you simply just go to the columns and select all if you have multiple values and then go to layout. So under layout, you will now find this feature, the overlap toggle, which will let you now overlap your values. So if you just adjust on the slider here, how much you want them to overlap with. So as you can see now, if they belong in the same axis, they overlap on top of each other, which if you're comparing previous to current is an easier way to, to kind of read your data. You can uh, we've already adjusted the ordering of our axes, but uh, you can also flip which one is on top. Uh, using this toggle here at the bottom. And as you can see, it's that easy. And with a few simple clicks, we were able to implement the same kind of solution, you know, without all of the hassle of creating overlapping charts on top of each other. It's all native in this one visual. Now let's have a look at a couple different ways that you can customize it to give it a bit more style or maybe just some options for you to consider if you want to use or upgrade this feature even further. So the first thing that you might want to consider there is or you might want to try out is, you know, trying to recreate IBCS style variance bar charts. So at the moment here we have you will see the actual value versus the comparing value and you will have a dark background for the, the current and then a black outlined behind the overlapped bar uh, as your previous. And, you know, if you want to follow and make your reports IBCS compliant and I did cover this uh, sev several times already in this channel. You can use SVG or other types of kind of visual options, but you can do this also natively in Power BI, at least parts of it. So 
So to do that is actually fairly simple. So from here, you saw it already, but basically it's all in the column section of the formatting. So first of all, here we're going to make it the this is the previous month sales. We're going to make the fill color white and we're going to add a border here. So the border is just black or gray, but it just signifies that that is the previous month. And then you will have the current month, which we will toggle here. And all you need to do is just simply just fill it with black. So that's it. So, you know, you now have sort of IBCS style kind of bar charts, which was pretty easy to implement, really. The next thing that you might want to do is to enable the labels, which we showed in our previous solution. Now, we can do that actually here on the data labels. Now you will see there are some overlaps on the labels um, because we have two axes axes here in the, the Y axis uh, well. But typically when you're showing comparison values like this, you only want to be showing the current value, just not to confuse uh, your users on what the values you are showing. So to do that, you just simply disable uh, the previous month sales label. When you enable the data, data labels, and then basically just showing the current values. Um, you can increase the density if you see that, for example, some values are not being shown, and that's purely because of the size of your font and the size of your visual. If you increase that density, it will just let you uh, pack more of the labels in a tighter space in your visuals. Now you might you might find that in some cases you want your labels to always be at the top of the bars and not here. Like for example, you can see here, I believe this is August. We want this label 7.4K at the top of the bars to show still 7.4K, but not really uh, on top of the bars themselves. So to do that, we're going to do a bit of DAX magic, which uh, we've already covered in the past before, but it's going to be super simple. So we're going to start by creating a measure. First of all, we're going to name this one a label. And we're going to just create a simple if statement. So if the sales is larger than the sales previous month, use the sales value else, use the sales previous month. So this essentially defines what height our labels are going to be. So we're going to add this into our Y axis here, but we're not actually, we don't actually want to show this. We just want it to show the label in the area that we want. So what we're going to do is for the sales, we're going to disable the label. And we're just going to make sure that the label is the only one that is, that is have the showing the, the labels uh, itself. Uh, we're going to change first the column to sh to make sure that it's transparent because we don't actually want to show the label. We just want to show the actual value and not the bar. And then we're going to go back to the data label here. Um, with the label series selected, we're going to scroll down to the value and then we're going to change the field here that is here by default to show the sales. So what it's done is what it's doing is essentially showing the labels for the current sales, but on the right heights that we we want. So as you can see, for example, here in the same month, August, it's showing 7.4 K, but on top of the bar, which normally would be here. It's a little bit confusing and uh, you will see that uh, Power BI does warn you of this when you kind of configure how the data labels work, but we, we are implementing it and we know how it works. So we can just kind of disregard that. But if you wanted a solution that kind of puts the label on top of the bars, this is the easiest way to do it. So let's uh, disable the legend here just to make things less confusing, something like this. There we go. Now, in the previous solution, we also created uh, or changed the color of the labels if the value that we're comparing is higher than the previous month or if it's lower. And uh, we can follow the same steps here. So by, by creating its own measure. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new measure here. We're going to just name it color and we're going to do the same calculation. So the same logic, basically. So if the sales is bigger than the previous month, we'll make it green. Otherwise, we'll make it red, something like this. And then what we're going to do is from the visual itself, we're going to go to data labels with the label series selected. You will look for the color of the value itself, and we'll just change that based on a field value. So we're going to use the color here. 
And as you can see, that changes the colors of the labels. You can make it bigger or more prominent like this. So it just shows you, you know, what those values are and if they're increasing or decreasing. You can even go a step further and change these labels into variance percentages if you wanted to and if that is easier for your users. But this is just how we're going to work in this example at the moment. And then the last trick that I wanted to show is how you can show a variance bars, which basically just shows it's meant to visualize kind of how big that difference is from the previous to the current. And this actually is a solution from Power BI Park in YouTube. And he's the one who came up with this solution. So it's actually a really, really kind of cool solution. So I'm going to leave a link to the original video that he created on this in the description box below. So I'm going to show you how to do it from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new measure here. We're going to create two new measures. We're going to uh, create one called green max, and then we're going to create a red max, which is going to be the opposite. So the idea with this is that we want to show a certain line. If the difference is, if the current value is bigger than the previous month, we want to show the, uh, the value. Otherwise, we want to show the, the vice versa. It sounds a little bit confusing, but I'm going to explain it better once it's uh, it's finished. So let's do like this. Uh, so now we've set up the measures. We're going to go to the error bars. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the first one is sales. So apologies, guys, I had some technical difficulties. My Power BI desktop restarted and didn't save my changes. So I've just gone back to a uh, version that I have um, just and we'll just pick up where we left off earlier. And so where we left off is we created the green max and the red max DAX measures. And we're now going to use the error bars to adjust essentially the, uh, the properties to add those variance colors onto our overlapping bars. So to do that, we just simply go to the error bars themselves. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have the correct series selected here in your list. So in this case, we're going to start with the sales. We're going to make sure that the error bars are enabled here. And then on the upper bound, you just need to make sure that you select the red max. And what you will notice, it might not be that noticeable, but when I zoom into our bars, you will notice that it adds like this tiny line, which only applies uh, when the current bar is lower than the previous bar. And the reason why we want that to only show when that when the current bar is lower than the previous bar is so that we can adjust the color of that bar. I and mean, as you notice already, the bar color on the error bars isn't you can't conditionally format it like you normally would. So that's why we have to create this workarounds to be able to adjust the colors. So we have an upper bound for this case, and we use the if statements to check if that overlap is on the right order, if the current bar is smaller than the previous bar. So uh, from here, we're going to just adjust a few things like, for example, um, just make the width a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe change the marker size, the, the tip points of the air bars to be none, and then just change the border color into zero just so that we don't have that border. And now what it does is it basically just shows you, you know, that increase or decrease variance on the actual bars. So let's do the same thing on the uh, previous month. So we'll select that, that measure. We'll make sure that it's enabled, first of all. Then we'll click upper bound and select green max. So as you can see, now it's added the, the error bars, but on the flip side, on the ones where the current bar is higher than the previous previous bar. So uh, we'll do the same thing here. So we'll change the color into green. So we'll just select any green here, marker size to none uh, with it, we'll set it to 10 and then no borders. And basically that's it. So you have an IBCS style bar chart showing labels on top of the bars with the bar, bar variants on the bars, overlapping bars themselves. And uh, as you can see, as you select different categories here, it gives you a different analysis, which is pretty handy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use overlapping bars and how you can customize it in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful, give it a dislike, 
if you didn't, something to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.